well, I did a thing. I officially bought a knitting machine. This is the Silver 3LK150 knitting machine. If you're new to my page, I crochet a lot here. Like this isn't just a crochet page, but I do crochet a lot here usually. But I've been dealing with an arm injury from crocheting since about December. I'm in occupational therapy and we're trying to figure out what's really going on with it, but healing is a work in progress and it takes time. I have missed working with yarn so much. I'm very excited to try out this knitting machine. If you've ever seen any of my unboxing videos before, you'll know that I'm quite terrible at unboxing. Ah. Woo! Oh, there's so many parts. <laughs> I've watched a bunch of tutorials about this. They all said, take a picture of your knitting machine in the box so you can remember where everything goes. I am about the least organized person on earth. I cannot picture actually putting everything back in the box every time. And this is the knitting machine. This is gonna be so cool once I figure it out. We're gonna make so much stuff. So once I get it all set up, I will literally just go back and forth and the thingamabob will do the knitting for me. I never use instruction manuals. Like I will just put it together and be like, oh, I've got 13 screws left over. It's fine. The thing I want to knit a lot this year is going to be skirts. I think that I want to bring patchwork skirts into my daily fashion. I feel like knitting them would be really, really fun. How to set up machine. The clamps. This looks like a fishing rod. Yarn rod. Ding. This is something my brain can understand. If I have this like wooden picnic table thing as my table, I don't actually know if these will attach to it, but we'll find out. Speaking of other tables and crafting areas, I have this area of my house that is like this little like loft area. I'm pointing to it like as if you can see what I'm pointing at. But anyways, it's this little loft area and it's really cute in theory, but I am about this close to being a hoarder and it's something that I'm trying to work on. So one of my goals for the next couple months is to go through everything and turn our lofted area into a craft room. The craft room will have a table that will be set up with the sewing machine, the knitting machine, and the Cricut. It works on the table. <gasps> Icky noises are only ever good or bad. Yarn rod, the yarn rod socket with the open side on my right hand side. I love that I'm explaining all this step by step as if this is going to make enough sense to actually be a tutorial. These little things are fun to play with. So why do I do this myself? It's 11 o'clock. Now we're getting the praying mantis vibes. Oh yeah, there's actually a hole for it. Oh, I did it. You can't really see it from there. So let me film it from over here. There we go. There's the praying mantis head. Oh, and, and that's the loft I was talking about. It's like up, up, up there counter there. Is that all the parts? Wait, did I do the thing? Is that, is that set up? I know I don't know how to use it yet, but I think it's set up, which is definitely a start. Oh, that's how it counts. Wait, this is so cool. Look at this. Look at this. Counting away. Look at it go. So I grabbed some just like excess yarn. It's saying I have to prepare the yarn using a wool winder. I guess I can buy a wool winder, but not like now at 11 p.m. All right, well, this part's gonna take like an hour, so I guess I'm gonna go on live and say hi to you guys while I wind up this wool. Step number one was prepare the yarn. Step number two is arrange the needle. Starting from zero, push 30 needles on both sides. Zero. Slowly move the carriage to the right until it passes all the needles in B position and then return it to the left. So now they're in B position. Move it back slowly to the left. Okay. Push every other needle back to A position. So yarn goes through the triangle thingy. Adjust the tension dial according to the thickness of the yarn. I don't understand at all. Okay, we're gonna grab this guy. Pull him down. Feel like I'm missing a step. <sighs> Fed it into the feeder. It says to hold here. Slowly move it to the other side. Okay, it's stuck. It's stuck. Oh no. Take number two. Well, on the second attempt, literally nothing happened. Attempt number three. What am I doing wrong? I don't understand. Okay, fourth time's a charm. Now I think it's actually gonna work. One more time. I did see a lot of people talking in videos about how they will do something called an e-loop and they will like manually cast on and they were saying that there's a way to do it with machine which is i'm assuming this way and a lot of people were saying that they hated the way that they were supposed to do it with machine maybe this is why yeah i'm learning the hard way move the carriage slowly from left to right <gasps> I 
actually don't know what the difference was except for going slower. Maybe I just was supposed to go super slow the whole time. Next, you hook, cast on, comb. And I'm actually going to be putting this on here. So it's on, that looks correct. <gasps> Y'all, this is knitting. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Why is it so dang pretty? Like why? You have no business being this gorgeous. Ah! Oh no, I messed it up. I messed it up. Since we are kind of to a wonky part of the project, I am going to use this time to learn how to end the project. We'll start to take this off and let's check out our little swatchy swatch that we made. And then next time we'll actually do like a whole project with a knitting machine. Cause like I said, today I just really wanted to get this thing set up, see how it works, learn the different parts. And I feel like, I feel like we're getting there. I feel like we're learning it slowly. <laughs> Definitely let me know in the comments if you have project ideas that I could do with the knitting machine. Cause this goes so quickly. It took like five minutes to do like 30 rows. It's crazy. How to end the project. Removing the knitting from the knitting machine. Remove the weights from the project first. And remove the cast on comb. There we go, I got it. Ooh. I have been watching videos about how to cast off for the last 30 minutes and I can't figure it out and it's gotten so much worse. It's, it's literally just complete chaos now. I fear this project is past the point of no return. Don't think we're going to save this one. Another hour later and I did not learn how to cast off. I'm not gonna lie to you, I just ended up pulling the project off and then kind of sewing up the ends. Here is a final look at our first ever swatch made on our knitting machine. There is still literally so much that I need to learn about the knitting machine. Like I said, I don't even really know how to correctly cast off yet, but I think that this is going to be so much fun. It's going to be such a journey for us to go on together. Such a great way for me to let my arm heal and still play with yarn. I would love to hear what ideas you guys have for the knitting machine. So if you have project ideas for this knitting machine, let me know in the comments below.